Yeah, it kind of seems like I talk about the weather in these introductions, but man, it's just the facts. I'm from here, and this is unusual. We went straight from couldn't work outside to too hot to work outside. Anyway, we've got this trailer going. Yesterday, we got that all pressure washed, cleaned up, and did some work on the decking to support it and cut off some of the sharp edges and flanges on the uh, frame that weren't needed. What we have left is to buff it down and paint it and do all the wiring, but first we've got to check out these bearings. The tires look pretty good. It doesn't have brakes on this trailer, but the bearings are critical. And this is something I've done thousands and thousands of times in my whole career, but I don't want to just take for granted that everybody, you know, has the kind of background I do on this. So I'm gonna talk a little bit like tutorial-ish, if you will, and then I'm gonna break out a few shorts, like how to check your bearings, how to change a tire, you know, what to look for on your trailer. But bearings is something that's critical on your trailer and it can't be an unknown. So you either get them professionally serviced every other year, uh, which I'd recommend, take them in to the RV place or the tire shop, have the bearings all completely packed, re new grease and new seals every two years as a preventative kind of thing, or at least know how to check them. Once I've packed them and serviced them, I can feel pretty confident they're okay, but I'm still gonna check them once a year. I did check the bearings a little bit by feel when I bought the trailer, but frankly, I knew I was gonna go through and service them anyway. Um, I'm just hoping that we don't find anything really terrible. So I'm gonna talk as we go through this. If you've done it a thousand times before, you can enjoy me, enjoy my mistakes, maybe even leave a comment of things I forgot. But so we're gonna get a really good look at these because we're gonna put some heavy, valuable projects on here and haul them around and we don't, uh, we don't want any trouble. So I should have probably done this even before I started cleaning the thing, but this is what we're gonna do now. So let's get into it. All right, first of all, if you've got a reason to take a tire off your trailer, there's two things you need. You need a way to jack it up and you need a way to take off the lugs. Now, most cars, trucks come with these tools in them. A lot of times these things will work for your trailer. We actually don't need to take the tires off the hubs to check the bearings. You can pull the bearings out, leave the tires and hubs all together. But I'm picky and I want to clean and make sure they're on correctly and there's no other hidden problems. So I'm not gonna leave the assemblies together. And the best place to put our jack would be under the axle behind the tire. There's also a point here where we can jack both of these up because we wanna check the bearing plate. This bearing has quite a bit of movement. This one is almost none. This one has a little bit of movement and that's what you want. You can spin it and listen. It shouldn't sound growly or grindy. And on a trailer, the goal would be to try to get under the axle that you're working on. So I'm going to go right on this bolt because it's going to grab onto the cup on my jack better. Those nuts were pretty tight and hard to turn all the way out. The reason is because it just hasn't been off in a long time and I hope they go on a little easier. But you never want to put penetrating oil or lubricant or anything on your nuts when you're putting it back together. The reason is it will falsely seem tight and not be the correct tightness. In fact, if you have lubricant on your nuts, you can over tighten the bolts to the point where they break. So it's important that these all be dry when you put it back together. If you just can't get them off and you wanna use some WD-40 or penetrating lubricant on them, 
that needs to be cleaned off when you put it back together. Uh, so we're going to whip this off here now and look at the bearings. This little rubber cap, this is called a bearing buddy. And what this does is it's got a little grease circuit in here and you put grease in it to keep things lubricated. Um, that's real handy, especially on boat trailers where it's in a lot of water. So here's the thing on these bearing buddies is you don't over grease it. What people want to do is they put their grease gun on here, put two or three pumps on and blow the seal out of the back. It's critical that you just put a couple of strokes on your grease gun until you begin to see this spring come out. There's a little spring in there and as the grease goes in, this will move towards you and you stop. Because if you keep going, you'll blow the seal, especially the rear seal will come out of the hub. So these are great when you use them properly, but just go really lightly on greasing that. So this is too far gone. We're not gonna grease it. We're gonna take it all apart and inspect the bearings and seals and see how things look inside. You can see a little keeper ring inside this, but that is not supposed to come out. That goes with the bearing buddy and holds the spring with the little grease in. This whole chrome part needs to come off. You may not have that. You may just have a cap that looks like this only metal. So you don't disassemble that. You just want to knock it out of there. We can, we can use a rubber mallet or we can use a screwdriver to try to get behind it. Or we can even use some big pliers and try to pull it off that way by weaseling it off. It's just a tight fit in the hub. Fits exactly like it's supposed to. First thing is the cotter pin, which is right here. I'm gonna straighten this out and pull it out. You can also just cut it because we never wanna reuse a cotter pin. and pull on it until it comes out. All right, the next thing we're gonna come across is the axle nut. It's actually holding the hub on. We're gonna use a big pliers or a big wrench to loosen that off. Okay, we're gonna to try to keep this stuff up out of the dirt because we do not want any dirt getting its way into our bearings. So while we're working on this, disassembling it and checking everything, let's keep everything as clean as possible and out of the dirt. Okay, behind that there's gonna be a washer, so let's see if we can get it. There is the washer. This thing is destroyed and that's very worrisome because it means that this stuff all rubbed on the ground once. Look how beat up it is. That's not normal. This should slide off easier than this. It just means that it's had some trauma.
rear seal is catching. There definitely has been some trauma. seal has came out. This is the rear seal. Belongs in the back of the hub. And here's the rear bearing. Evidently pretty well seized on there. So that's not good. This should have all slid off pretty easy. The spindle itself has gotten pretty beat up. And there's some scarring underneath here. I can feel rough edges. That's holding that bearing on. Very unfortunate. Okay. Well, that's why we check, right? We would not have gotten far with this bearing the way it is. Let me see if I can show you the concern. Underneath here, you're looking up at the sky at the bottom part of the spindle. This is the spindle that the bearings glide on. And where this bearing goes onto the spindle should have slid easy and slid right back off. But it's all torn up and there's actually sharp edges. Right here, a very sharp edge and some jagged metal. So, We've got to do is find a way to get this bearing and seal off of here and then clean the spindle up and see if we can save it so that a new bearing will slide on and off easily then we'll know we're okay uh, we'll take the hub in the shop we can get out of the heat and look it over real good That bearing got ruined but at least we got it off the spindle messed up underneath you can cut these off right here and just put another end on I was able to find the right bearings and the seal and I was not able to find the right thrust washer so I have to clean it up and I had to clean up the spindle If you've ever heard the term packing the bearing, not really sure what that meant. It's when we're, we're trying to pack grease inside here and the, the way to get in is right between this back side right here between the two halves. And you mash it, mash it in, packing it full of grease. Until it begins to squeeze out. So I cleaned up the spindle as good as I could. I could not find a new thrust washer, so I had to clean it. And we're just going to 
I put this seal in and see if we can get that back on the spindle correctly and get it tightened up properly. It should roll and we'll recheck it again in a few miles and then it's the only thing we can do unless we replace the axle. All right. So the seal goes this way with the numbers out. You pop it in here like this. Remember that bolt on the bus brakes? This is that socket that I had to buy. And look at that, perfect fit. Okay, how's that? Then we've got this fresh front bearing. We're going to pack. Sanded it and polished it. And then I tried the bearings and seals on to make sure they would slide on nicely. Before I installed them in the hub. Now we've got them in here. We're hoping that it just glides on really nicely without catching on anything. And push all the way back right there. Just like that. Now the thrust washer has a keyway on it. It only fits on a certain way. It's pretty beat up. I've got to find a new one. The nut is fine, of course. Now, what is the proper tightness? Someone that hasn't done this before wouldn't be really sure how tight to make it. We do this with these tapered bearings, and these are the tapered ones there on an angle. Is you pre-tighten it to seat them in, and then back it up a little bit. And the threads are a little rough on this nut. It should spin on easier. Let me go till I feel it starting to tighten up. Okay. It's gotten tight right there. You can feel the dress washer, and that is against it. It's much too tight. But the reason I'm going like that is because I want to seat the bearings in. They just got packed with grease, and I'll make sure that they're all seated to where they are gonna ride. And that thing is fully on where it wasn't before. It had a lot of floppiness. Okay, now I'm gonna, gonna back it up. Comes loose. I'm going to go forward just until it snugs. So I'm going to feel it like this. That nut is a little rough on the threads. That is the spot right there where it's cinching. Put a cotter pin in it. We've got to check this really well in a few miles. All right. Put the bearing buddy on. Keep plenty of grease in it. Well guys, it occurs to me this video is going to be pretty long. I don't know if it's going to go up in two pieces or maybe just one long video. 
Um, I welded on some D-rings. I got these on Amazon. And I'm not too proud of my welding. Uh, the welder I had was a 140 Lincoln. It's not real hot. So I can tell you the secret for a beginner to get good looking welds and that's to grind it all off. So uh, weld away and then grind. Weld some more and grind. And you can get some decent looking work. Got the ramps cleaned up and painted. I got a couple of add-ons like this cool hook for my winch. Just did a couple coats of Dr. Ross gloss black on there. A little bummed out because this back axle turns out it's going to have to be replaced. I don't know if it shows up in the video but this back tire you can see is canted in. So I got a quote on the axle and probably just going to replace both axles as soon as we get over to the big shop. But I got it good, good enough together now that we can use it. Uh, to finish transporting our stuff into storage. We've still got to get these lights on and I've got some reflective stickers and uh, We're very close to having this thing good enough and road ready So we can finish packing up Usually we'll for, forget to put the heat shrink on until after we've got all our connections made. After a while you start to remember that one. Always pull on your connections make doubly sure that they're tight. If it comes loose, you'd rather know now, right? I'm not using this lame thing. Don't. We got a good, good pigtail off of Amazon. And I'm going to hold this down right here with some clips so it's nice and sturdy. So I stripped the browns a little long because they need to be wrapped together and go into one connector. I want a little bit of extra length so I can curl them together. <laughs> 